Let's have a look at uh, digital certificates. Digital certificates are actually one of the most misunderstood areas of security and, and really are cause many difficulties when it comes to proving identities and proving that objects are valid and so on. So there's a certain main areas that digital certificates are used. One area that, that they're used is to prove the identity, in this case of Bob to Alice. What normally happens is that uh, Bob will encrypt something with his private key, secret message say, and then we'll send through that to Alice and then Bob sends through his digital certificate which has his public key on it and then Alice uses this public key to be able to decrypt the actual secret message that's been sent and if she can then uh, she knows that it was Bob that sent it because only Bob can have this private key okay so digital certificates are a good way of proving identity uh, and especially they identify the, the person and their associated keys. The other thing they can do is that if we encrypt the data using public key then Bob can encrypt the data, send it through and then send through his digital certificate with a public key on it and then Alice can use, take the public key off and then decrypt the data. What she can do is she can put it into her own personal store or her own uh, certificate uh, deposit depository or she can use a PKI storage where uh, she could deposit the certificate or the certificate could be there to be able to view it when required. Okay, so that's, uh, that's two main cases of its usage. When Bob purchases a, a certificate he will go to a trusted authority and then he will download a certificate with both the public and the private key on it. He'll keep that secure and then when he distributes his certificates he will only distribute his public key. So how do we get a level of trust? Well what happens is that uh, Trent in this case is trusted by Alice. He will verify Bob and that Bob really does exist and is that person. He will then create a certificate and then he will sign it. He signs it again with his uh, private key and will distribute his public key to those who want to know if the certificates are valid. So when Bob sends over the his certificate, it's signed by Trent, she then goes into a trusted uh, authority and takes off uh, Trent's public key and then is able to prove that the certificate has been signed by Trent. So in this case we develop what's called a trust infrastructure. So the way it works is that we have trusted routes, these are the top level certificate authorities or CEs and they grant uh, certificates. So they must check the identity of the person, it might be their driver license, a utility bill, even the location, whether they have a bank account and so on. So examples of these are very sign in trust, GoDaddy, Microsoft Trust and, and so on. So the CA will issue a certificate uh, to Bob to identify them and signed by Trent in this case. Bob then sends through the certificate. She then has a, a Trent's certificate and a trusted route certificate. So she knows the public key. She then checks to see if the signature of the, the certificate is correct. And if she trusts Trent, then she will trust the identity of Bob. Unfortunately, what can happen, though, is that uh, Eve can trick the CA into saying that uh, she's Bob. The CA might send the certificate. Uh, and then Eve can pretend to be Bob because it looks like it's a... A signed certificate. The three levels of uh, signing that we have or certificates is we have a trusted route, that's the highest level, we always trust these. These are typically embedded into the machine when, it, when the operating system is installed or whenever we come across a new certificate we might uh, add a new signing authority in there. 
then we have a level below that which is intermediate which can sign certain things maybe they're signing code hardware drivers and, and so on so let's see if we can actually find uh, an example of that so here we are so there's uh, my trusted root okay so these are the most trusted certificates if one certificate comes in that's been signed by any of these then we'll automatically accept it so we might take this one here okay so it's valid till 2028 long time and these are some of the details there's version number serial number there's thumbprint to make sure it hasn't been changed there's the uh, the RSA key the public key uh, that uh, that we've got here there's the issuer there's the X500 identif identification of the uh, of the organizer of the, the issuer and so on and we should see the certification pack path takes us right to the very top okay so that's a trusted then we have intermediate which are trusting certain things uh, so typically these are drivers and VPN connections and, and so on so if we have a look and uh, see if we can find Windows 1 so there we go there's the Windows 1 which is verifying all the Windows drivers and the, the Windows hardware Okay, so that's a, an important certificate. Unfortunately, it's expired, <laughs> but it was signed by the Microsoft Root Authority. Um, there. Okay, and then we can have uh, other personal ones that we'll accept once, and then they'll be accepted. So in this case, when we log into Windows Live uh, for HTTPS, then the certificate will be used to verify it. Okay, so the lowest level of uh, certification and, and almost has zero certification is self-signed and these can never be really trusted because they're verified by the person. They're issued by the person who they're verifying, so they have zero trust level. You can see here there's a, there's a private key associated with this one. There are so many problems with the certificates. Uh, one of the most significant significant one is that uh, the complete lack of understanding of how they work really by the general public and the people that they're meant to uh, be protecting. Even seasoned IT professionals struggle with the usage of digital certificates and they can also be spoofed and uh, if someone finds out your private key then they can compromise a whole lot of things so it happened recently with a company who had their private key hacked into which meant that their all of their signing was then compromised so before we have a look at some real or fake certificates we'll have a look at some examples uh, here so in this case we're using HTTPS and we'll see here that, that when we try to access this it gives us that uh, the connection is un untrusted and it's because the certificate is signed for this uh, domain here rather than for the whole of the, the network connection uh, you may have noticed that but for a while uh, it, Google traffic has been uh, signed and is encrypted so that if someone is listening on the line they won't be able to uh, decrypt the HTTP traffic so there is our Google certificate and we can then see what the certificate looks like and we can see here there is the top level CA given Google Internet Authority there's a sub authority there we can have a look at the version number issuer and the date is valid from and to subject and and so on so there's the public key that's uh, on the certificate and so on and that's the the hashing algorithm that's used to show that the certificate hasn't actually been changed 
Okay, so let's look at a few examples here. So here's our first one, ebay.com, VeriSign Class 3 is actually a root certificate, a root CA. Okay, so that's been issued to eBay, so it's a valid certificate. Next one, we can see the weakness here is that the same organization has issued the certificate to and from, so that's obviously a fake one. What happened next is the user will get a warning, say do you sure want to install the certificate? If they say yes, then it goes straight into the uh, the root. Uh, we can see it in there. This one here, in this case global sign domain is actually real. Okay, so we can see a top level authority here. So let's look at our example. Let's click to that and let's go to here. And our example is an encryption. Just scroll down until you get to this link. So we're going to create a, a digital certificate. So let's say it's a, let's call it Global Mega Corp. Subject is my email test and we'll give it a serial number and then we'll make it valid for 150 days. So we're going to create it and what this will do is create two keys using RSA 512 bit keys and then it creates a certificate. This is what a certificate actually looks like when we receive it and then we can paste that in. So you'll find that this link here has a little zip file associated with it with this certificate we've just created. So hopefully it should have all the details that we've just entered. Okay, just go there, there, and there, and there's our certificate. And there we go, my email test, Global Mega. That's how long it's valid for, and so on. Okay, so there's the there's the RSA key, 512 bits. There's the, the valid time. So let's have a look at the code that's associated with this. So the code that we're actually using is from OpenSSL. So we should find that the, we, we use Bounty Castle in quite a few examples, but in this case we're using OpenSSL. And here is the DLL that we add. If you go to the OpenSSL site, you'll find this DLL. There are two other associated DLLs that you need to match and add when you're deploying it onto your website. So let's go back to our code and it's in create set. Okay. So there's two there's two main actions. One is when it's an HTTP HTTP get, that's when the page is loaded. And the other one is an HTTP post, that's when the button is clicked. So the page itself looks very simple. Uh, we just have a basic table here, shows the basic details, issuer, subject, serial number and so on. And then there's the button. It's going to call that and then when we press the button it will go to the HTTP post which is here. Okay, so we pop off the, the details from the form for the issuer, the subject and so on. We then create a new name here and a new issuer. After this, we'll create our two keys. So this is an open SSL. This is how we create our keys. And there, so that's our two keys created, a public and a private key. We can then create uh, the the certificate with a serial number, number of days that it's valid for, the current date our keys and so on. The PEM format creates a, a, the string for us for our import. We can then uh, create the certificate here. I've then imported it and to create a zip file uh, stored on the server and then the link will actually give the link name at the end here 
and then that should be the certificate. Okay, so just to recap, we'll just take another example. Create that, creates the two keys, creates the certificate, and then the link that we get should be a zip file. And when we open that, that gives us our certificate. If we want, we could install that certificate onto our onto our system. So let's put it onto the local user. We could then define the store that we're going to use. Let's use our personal storage. And that's the certificate on the machine. And when we go to our uh, our stores, we should find that that has actually been installed. Okay, so that's shown an example of digital certificates.